Hi folks, my name's Ashley. I'm one of the founders of Skira and I'm here today to show you a few of the highlights of the latest Construct 3 release 293. Let's jump in. Uh, first up, we have a new templates feature. And to demonstrate how that works, I've just got a little project here with a few sprites. Um, now, normally you can modify sprites all individually uh, or instances of any kind of object, uh, which is great. But sometimes you do want to update them all at the same time. If you imagine hundreds of these uh, piggies across dozens of layouts and you want to make a change to them, uh, that could take a long time. So to solve this problem, we have a new templates feature. So this piggy on top here can be made a uh, template. And I'm going to give it a template name of my piggy. And now all of these uh, ones beneath it, if I select all of those, these can be made as replicas, which means they'll inherit what the template uh, has for its properties. So now I can set them as a replica of my piggy, which I just created above. And you'll see the properties change color to indicate that these now come from the template my piggy. Now you'll see if I change the piggy and rotate it, it updates all of them. So these replicas are inheriting the properties of the template. And this uh, template here, this uh, piggy where everything's being inherited from, can be on a different layout. So that can uh, easily update your entire project if you make changes. You can also have lots of different templates of this uh, piggy uh, with different names. And you can also use the create object action uh, to specify which template you want to use, which allows you to create um, different objects with different initial properties easily using templates. So that's a handy uh, game design feature for you there. Um, there's plenty you can do with that. Um, I'll leave you to explore that. Uh, let's move on to the next feature. Uh, next up, we have the HTML element plugin new in this release. Now this is a super powerful plugin which you can do an awful lot with. I'll just show you the basics and some of the possibilities with it now. This is basically a box where you can type in some HTML and it will appear in your game. Uh, so I'm just going to do a really simple basic demo. Um, now you don't have to uh, know HTML to try this out, um, try out the basics. Um, I'm not going to cover how to learn HTML in this video right now, uh, but essentially this means that uh, the word world here will appear in bold because it's between the strong tag, uh, the start tag and the end tag. Uh, so, and there we go. And if I preview that, you will see that the word bold, uh, sorry, the word uh, world appears in bold because it's got the strong tag around it. And you can see this box here just displays whatever HTML content I've given it. Now, you can also now add CSS files to your project and use styling. You'll notice here I've just added a uh, black border around that element uh, with the class name myElement, which you can find as the, uh, the class property of the HTML element object here. And you can use uh, the full range of CSS features here. Uh, so for example, I can add a uh, style to make the strong tag appear red. And now that piece of text appears in red. Again, I'm not going to cover how all of CSS works, but if you uh, know a little bit of HTML and CSS, you can start using uh, this to design parts of your game in HTML and CSS. Uh, and if you don't know it, it's quite a good way to learn as well. So you can just try out snippets. And uh, just to show you a little bit more, add some padding and a uh, border radius. Um, and now you can see uh, it's moved the text a little bit away from the border and it's got a rounded border now. So that just shows you how you can quickly get results using HTML and CSS with the HTML element plugin. Uh, let's demonstrate what you can do with that. Um, if, I, if you look in the example browser, there are some new examples which demonstrate some of the possibilities. Uh, this one just shows uh, all the different kind of HTML tags you can use. So this is all based on the HTML element plugin and includes buttons and links that you can detect clicking and uh, CSS animations. And this is a details and summary element, which is interactive. Another uh, perhaps uh, more useful for real games example is this one, which uh, takes a uh, this is the data editor uh, excuse me the data editor with a high score table in it in an array and that will be loaded into the html element plugin as a html table and this is actually a really great way to display tables in your games 
uh, because obviously achieving the same result with uh, sprites, text objects, tiled backgrounds and such would be difficult, especially if you include scrolling. So this just has a scroll overflow on it, which allows you to see a nice table of data uh, in your game. And you can also use the browser developer tools um, and see how all of these are HTML elements and inspect them and see what the styles are on the right. Again, a whole other area which I'm really just uh, scratching the surface off in this video. And now for one more example, a more advanced example, oops, I've just opened that again. Uh, one more example is a uh, HTML menu. This is an advanced example and this uh, piggy has a right click menu which expands a interactive context menu here with some options and you can rotate and uh, choose options to affect the sprite. Uh, this is again HTML element. It's using CSS animations for its appearance and disappearance. Uh, these are SVG icons. There's a box shadow and the menu size is according to the amount of content in it. Uh, again, something very difficult to achieve by other means uh, and HTML element makes this um, quite straightforward and you can see uh, how it's made in the event sheet and you can also see the HTML and SVG there and the CSS styles all fully commented so you can see how it works. Uh, so that's an incredibly powerful new plugin uh, which gives you loads of new options for using HTML and CSS to design things like user interfaces for your game. Uh, again, a whole world of possibilities there. I've only scratched the surface um, but let's move on one more, um, one more time and uh, next up, there's uh, some new guided tours. So you might have tried the beginner's guide, which shows you step by step what to do to make a simple game. There's now one for getting started with JavaScript. So it will show you the very basics of JavaScript coding. And we also have a, um, a multi-part uh, course on how to learn JavaScript and construct, which it links to at the end. And there's also getting started with timeline animation. So this will give you an introduction into the animation features of uh, construct. Um, so they're a great way to get started with those features. Uh, have a go if you're interested. And lastly, but not least, there are some cool new examples as well you can find here, uh, some of them using 3D, and there's a, another tower defense kind of uh, game example. So try those out, have an explore. And as ever, there's plenty more new in this release, loads of bug fixes, changes, usability improvements, optimizations, and so on. So see the full release notes for the uh, complete details. I've just covered a, a brief summary here. That's all for today. Uh, thank you, and we hope you enjoy this release.